Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please take your seats. And a very warm welcome here to the University of Strathclyde this afternoon to the Barony Hall, uh, one of the jewels in the crown of the University Estate, where we perform many activities. We have conferences here, senior meetings, uh, we have uh, major dinners, but most importantly, we host the graduation ceremonies where we celebrate the fantastic achievements of these uh, young women and men before us and behind us here in the stage uh, and recognize what they've done now to deserve their degrees. So they are currently graduands. In the course of the next 40 minutes, they will become graduates of Strathclyde University, a passport to success and a great recognition of their terrific hard work uh, and giving them a launch pad onwards and to the mums and dads, perhaps getting off the payroll a little bit more quickly too. But uh, the we also have a very international group with us today. Many of you have traveled from around the world. Most welcome to Glasgow. Forgive the slightly inclement weather, but that's not going to stop us having a wonderful time inside the hall this afternoon. Uh, so over the course of the next 45 minutes or so, as our gradu uh, graduates come across the stage, I will cap them, conferring their degree, uh, and then I'll give you some update on what is happening at and around the university. But on occasions like this, we can add some additional enjoyment from time to time. And I'm pleased to say that this afternoon is one of those occasions when we get to celebrate the outstanding contributions personally and professionally of international figures who are associated with Strathclyde or are our partners. And uh, this afternoon, we welcome Professor Max Lowe, who is on the stage with us, about whom you will hear a little bit more in a moment. Uh, an outstanding internationally recognized scientist uh, and uh, applied uh, scientist, but also very quickly has become a dynamic and strong leader within the UK higher education system. So it's great to have him here today. So with that, uh, I will formally declare the congregation open and invite Professor David Littlejohn to introduce our honorary graduate for this afternoon. Thank you and enjoy the afternoon. Principal and Vice-Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you Professor Gao Ching Max Lu, President and Vice-Chancellor of the University of Surrey. Professor Lu is a preeminent chemical engineer and nanotechnologist who joined Surrey in April 2016 after spending more than 20 years in senior roles at the University of Queensland, Australia, including his most recent position as provost and senior vice president. Before moving to Australia, Professor Liu had lectured at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. It was during his time at the University of Queensland that Professor Liu built his stellar career as a world-renowned researcher and inventor, a highly accomplished academic manager, and an inspirational leader. And for good measure, he's a really nice guy. Let me tell you some things about his achievements. First of all, Professor Liu has published over 500 research papers in top scientific journals. And these are papers of the highest quality, which other scientists have cited in their own work over 50,000 times. As a result, Professor Liu is one of only 150 academics in the world whose work is highly cited in not just one, but two subjects, material science and chemistry. My academic colleagues will be impressed to know that Max's H index, which is an indicator of the prominence of a researcher, is 110. Now that's about three times better than might be considered a good score for an average decent chemistry professor like myself. I mentioned that Professor Liu is also a successful inventor and he currently holds more than 20 international patents. I'm sure you will agree with me that Professor Liu's record of research and innovation is highly impressive, and he is just 55 years of old, as of yesterday. So belated happy birthdays to you, Max. <clears throat> Professor Liu has always been an innovator, 
someone who pushes back the boundaries. For example, at Queensland, he founded the Australian Research Council's Centre of Excellence for Functional Nanomaterials and served as its director for eight years. Professor Liu's many achievements in Australia have been recognised through several awards, including the Australian Research Council Federation Fellowship in 2003 and also in 2008, the China International Science and Technology Award, the inaugural Australia China Achievement Award for Education in 2014, and recently the Medal of the Order of Australia for his distinguished service to education and international research and to Australia-China relations. Furthermore, Professor Liu was named as a Queensland Great in 2013 and has been declared as one of the top 100 most influential engineers in Australia. Given his illustrious career, it will come as no surprise to learn that Professor Liu is a fellow of the Australian Academy of Science and the Australian Academy of Technological Sciences and Engineering. In the UK, he is a fellow of the Institute of Chemical Engineers and of the Royal Society of Chemistry, the leading professional bodies in these two disciplines. Professor Liu has served on multiple high-level Australian government committees and advisory boards, including those under the Prime Minister's Science, Engineering and Innovation Council. He is also a member of the fourth State Council of the China Overseas Chinese Expert Consultative Committee. Since moving to the UK, Professor Liu has become a member of the Prime Minister's Council for Science and Technology, the UK Research and Innovation Board, and he's on the board of the National Physical Laboratory, Universities UK, and the Leadership Council of the National Centre for Universities and Business. In the county of Surrey, he serves as the Deputy Lieutenant of Surrey and is a patron of the charity Transforming Housing. Despite all his achievements, Max Liu is a highly personable and down-to-earth individual. Outside of work, he likes to play tennis and swim, and he and his wife Leanne, who we are pleased to welcome to the ceremony today, love to go for regular walks in the Surrey countryside. I'm also told that Max is a real gadgets man, and he likes all the new electronic devices, which he loves to try out. As well as being a brilliant academic, Max is also known and respected for his humility, good humour and willingness to learn. Characteristics he's demonstrated throughout his life, and not just in science, as the following story reveals. Shortly after arriving in Australia, Max and Leanne were invited to a party given by one of his new colleagues. Max was still getting used to the road signs and driving in a foreign country, especially at night. On arriving at his destination, Max made the mistake of entering a car park by the exit rather than the entrance, a mistake that was unfortunately witnessed by a member of the Australian Constabulary, who was not at all amused by Max's creative interpretation of traffic regulations. Max was horrified and embarrassed by his transgression. And rather than trying to make excuses, he apologised profusely to the policeman and kept on apologising over and over again until the lawman got fed up listening to him, took pity on Max, letting him off with a warning. When he recalled the incident to his colleagues, they were not only amused but impressed that Max had managed to get away without a traffic ticket because the Australian police are famous for their strict application of the law. You see, humility, good humour and a willingness to learn stood Max in good stead that night in Queensland, and it has all his life. There can be no doubt that Max Liu is an exceptional person, an intensely human and inspiring individual who has made and continues to make important contributions to science, society, and academia. Therefore, Principal and Vice-Chancellor, in recognition of his exceptional service to higher education internationally, and for seminal contributions to science and innovations in the application of nanomaterials in clean energy and the environment, it is with great pleasure and the authority of Senate 
I ask you to confer upon Professor Max Liu the degree of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. I create you Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. We are delighted and privileged to have you join the Strathclyde family, Max. Many congratulations and we look forward to seeing you many more times. Well done. Thank you very much, David, for your very kind introduction. I could not recognize the person you referred to. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor for me to be standing here and being recognized by this fine institution, the University of Strathclyde. I'm also delighted to speak on behalf of all graduates on this wonderful occasion of celebration so first, can I say to all those who are graduating today, my warm congratulations on your fantastic academic achievements. As business graduates, your training and experience afford you the entrepreneurial spirit, and much needed in a society now defined, defined by speed, complexity, and uncertainty. It doesn't matter whether you're going to launch a startup or taking up a well-defined position in an established company. Either way, you need to embrace change and leadership as two key drivers of businesses. University education gives you the skills to think and to see the world differently. And importantly, also the ability to understand and to lead change. Speaking of change, the past century has been really extraordinary. Technology, for example, alone gives you a fascinating example of the pace of change. On December 17th, in 1903, the Wright brothers' famous first flight lasted 12 seconds for a distance of 120 feet, and that's less than the wingspan of a Boeing 47. 747. And 60, 66 years later, Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. So from 120 feet to 240,000 miles took just 66 years. And today, the power of computers is doubling every, every 18 months. Every minute, as I speak now, YouTube uses uploads 72 hours new videos, and Twitter uses tweets 300,000 times, and Google search engines receive 4 million searches. The past decades has also seen many digital disruptions in our economy that is ever more unpredictable. For example, companies like Airbnb, Uber, Amazon and Alibaba have redefined business models. At the same time, many organizations have been struggling to evolve at the speed demanded by the customers and partners. Businesses now and tomorrow need to move quickly and experiment widely. And that's why I think talented people like you could drive the innovation that would face the future challenges. So innovation is all about the ways of creating and capturing and delivering values. So to stay ahead of the curve, you need to have the courage, the resilience, and determination to keep innovating. I'm sure the Strathclyde has prepared you very well to think imaginatively and to take advantage of the future disruptions. In this era of big data, we are often overwhelmed by the speed and the connectivity, the urgency of the virtual world. Information going through our finger, 
fing fingers not even going through our brain cells sometimes. But the real knowledge and understanding are hard to achieve. So how do we understand what's happening and what happens next? And what does all that mean for me and for us? As I have learned from my career, and leaders need to deliver meaning by sifting through an enorm enormous amount of data for meaningful information that adds real value. Knowledge used to be power, but knowledge of what to ignore today is even more powerful. In other words, we need to know how to sift through the information and filter information. From my own experience, it is important to have the patience to really penetrate the superficial and truly discover substance underneath. Only by so doing, you'll be able to see a further vision and develop a sustainable strategy for the future, not only to deal with what is known to be important today, but also to cope the, with the unknowns and the disruptions of the future. So from my humble beginnings and throughout my career, I have learned that humility, resilience, and foresight are the most valuable traits, and particularly in the face of great unknowns. So good leaders who embody the qualities of empathy and integrity and selflessness engender trust in their followers to frame meaning for the future. So finally, can I offer my wholehearted congratulations to all of you and your families once again, and my best wishes for an exciting journey in the next chapter of your lives. And never stop learning, never stop innovating, and above all, enjoy the journey. Thank you. Principal and Vice-Chancellor, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy for Research in the Department of Human Resource Management, Patrick Philip O'Rourke. <clears throat> Douglas George Young. For research in the Department of Work, Employment and Organisation, Chandrama Roy. For research in the Department of the Hunter Centre for Entrepreneurship, Johan Pieter de Borst. For research in the Department of Management Science, Hilia Mudraka Arini. Christoph Werner. For research in the Department of Marketing, Jalan Azar. Amy Good. Iliana Katsaridu. Tijana Stankovic. For the degree of Master of Research in Research Methodology in Business and Management, Stephen Paul Hughes.
for the degree of Master of Science in Entrepreneurship, Innovation and Technology, Punit Agarwal. <laughs> Kanav Chabra. <laughs> Florence Chilisa. Jayes Chopra. Nathan Douglish. Marilyn Jothi DeMello. Douglas Ferguson. Yash Gupta. <laughs> Felix Honecker. <laughs> Bobby and Jirogi Kimani. <laughs> Maria Intavarino. Emily Bakamalala Ryan Ovoson. <laughs> Mark Sibold. <laughs> Leslie Thompson. <laughs> Lakshmi Venigopal. Dominic Vogt. <laughs> Scott Whitelaw. <laughs> In entrepreneurial management and leadership, Vedanth Agarwal Anankumar Drolia. <laughs> Alexia Delas. Katerina Fro, <laughs> Rowena G. Kai Sin, <laughs> Felix Muckenfuss, <laughs> Astrid Marie Marta Mugwe. Colin Russell Muller. <laughs> Natachon Tang Pang Chisil. <laughs> Florian Vinke. <laughs> In human resource management, Lauren Beatty. Cameron Bell. <laughs> T. Ruri Bottomley. <laughs> Rachel Elizabeth Carr. <laughs> Noemi Ciccone. Huey Ju Cheng. <laughs> Laura Jane Cowden. <laughs> Demi Leah Cram. <laughs> Lee Robert Brown Curry. Daniel Forrest. <laughs> Megan Gilfoyle. <laughs> Ms. 
Alexandra Gilmore. Shamina Islam. Denai Karathanasi. Ratha Vijay Kaure. Nikolaos Kitsios. Nicole McIntosh. Cameron Robert McIver. Jennifer McIver. Siobhan McCrory. Anna Hunter Morgan. Vary Isla Murning. Christos Fedonos. Amaya Pinedo Puente. Gregoria Pilaka. Aisha Ramzan. Michelle Louise Ross. Beth Savage. Adam Scott. Aphrodite Theodosio Theodoro. Jennifer Waddle. In International Human Resource Management, Bidisha Goswami. Meng Jia Hua. <laughs> Beata Jenny. <laughs> Despoina Katsuru. <laughs> Michelle Kelly. Meng Wang Lu. Avro Tulio Masanke. Roji Yu. In Human Resources and International Management, Jacob Adamus. Tanvi Agarwal. <laughs> Alexander Stephen Campbell Clark. <laughs> Nicole Eleanor Cleary. <laughs> Ornella Aldana Conforti Argat. Casey Gervolino. <laughs> Fan Fan Meng. <laughs> Leanne Uyang. <laughs> Tatiana Romano.
Finley Louise Tinto. <laughs> Zhao Meng Yang. In Hospitality and Tourism Leadership, Mark Ohlendorf. In Operational Research, Robert Kyle. In Business Analysis and Consulting, Jovito Neil Canlas. Shafayat Ahmed Chowdhury. <laughs> Remy Jimmy. <laughs> Yu Ting Chu. <laughs> Sufi Sibgat Raman. In Data Analytics, Andrea Consolato Fiore. <laughs> Poppy Rowena Harvey. In Marketing, Emily Victoria Allison. <laughs> Parin Bun Rowankatavorn. Supalak Champapan. <laughs> Chi Ting Chen. <laughs> Chung Wan Ting. <laughs> Kieran James Ferguson. Kirsty Ferguson. <laughs> Zhu Yi Ge. <laughs> Celine Denise Guna. <laughs> Zhe Sheng Go. Ji Wen Jing. <laughs> Our Anicha Kaewatrako Chote. <laughs> Xi'an Lang. <laughs> Ya Ying Lin. Liu Si Jia. <laughs> Emily Jane McDonald. <laughs> Eli Mather. <laughs> Despoña Naupantidu. Alexandra Johanna Newman. <laughs> Connor David O'Donnelly. <laughs> Dogokan Ozerk. <laughs> Fatima Pin Basua. Heather Robertson. <laughs> Napasorn Sakuyong. <laughs> Imogen Sherritt. <laughs> Yudan Shi.
Su Chun Che. Kai Chen Wang. Zing Yi Wang. Ze Hong Wei. Chu Chan Wu. Jia Hao Wu. Jia Wen Jung. Chang Zing. Yi Yang. De Chang Ye. Sarah Antonia Young. Wan Ying Yu. Qi Zhang. Yan Zhang. Zhe Zhang. Zhu Ji Zhu. In international marketing, Jose Alfredo Luis Alvarado. Iris Avital. Roman Canton. Kate Cassidy. Chai Ning Yu. Marissa Ann Clark. Yuan Ding. Yu King Ding. Ying Duan. <laughs> Sophie Duncan Shepherd. <laughs> Oiku Eche Ergen. <laughs> Ying Kong Hu. Huang Yi Wen. Atul Jaka. Isabel Sabine Gertrude Jasowski. Pei Yu Li. Kian Ru Lin. <laughs> Wen Kian Lu. <laughs> Zhu Ping Peng. <laughs> Lorin Peru. Rui Fan Shen. <laughs> Thana Sri La Vivalas. <laughs> Thunjara Sri La Vivalas. <laughs> Sri
Shriya Verma. Manzu. Yinju. In Tourism Marketing Management, Karen Dunlevy. Warna Kulasaria Serena Fernando. Chuk Wakamso Tiffany Osamo. Prin Eliza. Yung Ting Wang. Ying Wen Nancy Jiang. In Innovation and Marketing Management, Nada Sulayman A. Al Hamdan. Michelle Allen. Daoud Naya. Huey Yu Peng. For the Postgraduate Diploma in Human Resource Management, Louise Helen Grant Cullen. Nicola Ann Lang. Nicole Hope McClement. Katie Annabelle Ferguson Marshall. Christy Muir. Amanda Pearson. Hussein Tavakoli Hidayatpur. In research methodology in business and management, Ikidinachi Kingsley Ogamba. In tourism marketing management, Deji Kujen. For the degree of Master of Science in Entrepreneurship, Innovation and Technology, Sharon Rafir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's start by giving these new Strathclyde graduates a big collective round of applause. So, once again, let me extend a very warm and sincere welcome to all of you here at this wonderful ceremony, a day that none of you will forget, and nor should you. It marks the successful completion of years of hard work, and now you've graduated in front of your friends, your families, and your colleagues. Today, we welcome visitors from all over Scotland, throughout the UK, and indeed from across the globe. We're delighted to see you here uh, in today's celebration. Of course, as part of the context, 
and at least the flux that we face in society, it's important for us to reflect today, your graduation day, what's going on in the world here in Scotland with political dynamics throughout the UK, across Europe, and indeed the Atlantic. Where just 48 hours ago, we saw the voice of democracy speaking about the acceptability or otherwise of the excesses of leadership. And it's worthwhile acknowledging the roles for universities and universities such as ours. Strathclyde is an institution where freedom of thought is valued and encouraged. We're a place that is both tolerant and inclusive, and where people of diverse national, cultural, and social backgrounds come together to enjoy good education and a shared student experience. We all benefit from having a student and staff community of over 100 countries here on the campus. Ours attempts to be a socially progressive community and one that is an exemplar for modern society. We are plural and proud of it, multicultural, and we seek to be enlightened. It's our responsibility, it is your responsibility to challenge unacceptable practices, even in the face of leadership that can do better than listen to us that try to apply reason. And also, we should always try and exemplify modern, inclusive society. But of course, today, we're here to acknowledge your hard work, the learning that you've built up and the successful completion of your degree course. Uh, I'm an engineer, which always feels like an admission here in the business school. But uh, the great American inventor said, that's Thomas Edison, that genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. But as Strathclyde, as I'm sure your percentages was much better than that, in that clever bunch in the business school. Uh, important that we always apply ourselves. I was brought up here in Glasgow. Uh, for those of you that uh, are visitors to the city, a sunny hamlet called Govan on the south side of Glasgow, where our town's motto was and is nihil sine labore, which means nothing without hard work. So as well as, as you heard from Professor Lou, having integrity and empathy, work hard. I try to take that ethos into every day that I come here to the university and enjoy doing it and take that approach into your careers and it will pay dividends. And today, of course, you become Strathclyde alumni. You're the latest of our torchbearers going into the world, just like many generation of graduates before you. And with all that you've successfully come through, I'm sure you'd agree that you couldn't have achieved this without the backing and encouragement of the community of uh, supporters around you. And it's fitting that we acknowledge their part in the successful completion of university studies. Our graduates and the university at large owe them an enormous debt of gratitude. As the first in my own family to have gone to university here at Strathclyde. And uh, Professor Lou, I was thinking only today as I prepared for my speech, it's 40 years since I graduated from Strathclyde University as a very talented eight-year-old boy. Quite incredible, <laughs> quite incredible how education systems have moved on. But uh, all of us uh, owe Strathclyde a great debt of gratitude. And of course, today's graduates and all of our staff would like to take this opportunity to thank your families, your friends and your supporters for all that they've done to make today possible. Thank you very much indeed. And for our academic staff too, this is a very important day because your success is ultimately their reward. Strathclyde has worked very hard to provide you with a high quality education and a first class university experience for all students, regardless of background. So let me now invite the new graduates of Strathclyde University to join with me in saying a big thank you to the academic staff and the support staff that helped you in your recent journey. Thank you. But some thoughts about your institution, Strathclyde, as you leave the hall today. Uh, remember, we were founded in 1796. Uh, we are 222 years old this year, or as I like to refer to us as we're a 200-year-old startup organization. We're still ambitious, enthusiastic, try to keep that same dynamism. And throughout our history, the University of Strathclyde has remained faithful to our founding principles. And we were established, and I quote, for the benefit of all mankind. We were the only higher education institution to be established in Scotland at the time of the Enlightenment. That gives Strathclyde a real distinction. That was a time of challenge, where universities typically were places apart, 
but Strathclyde started under the banner as Anderson's institution, was connected to society, educating women, putting on night classes and trying to do research work that made a difference to manufacturing, to economy and agriculture and the likes. And we've had a string of wonderful people that have come through the doors here. Uh, Dr. David Livingston, a Strathclyde alumni, uh, alumnus. He was an explorer and medic uh, who worked in Africa. John Logie Baird, the inventor of television, did his work here in the Royal College, uh, just down the road in George Street. Lord Reith, the first governor of the BBC. And before him, the founder of the oil and gas industry, James Paraffin Young, part of our proud alumni community. And on the low carbon side of things, James Blythe, the first person to have demonstrated the production of electricity using wind power. And more recently, Dame Eilish Angelini, Scotland's first Lord Advocate. And from the business community, Sir Tom Hunter, Sir Brian Souter, Jim McCall, and many others, all fellow graduates from Strathclyde. So you're joining good company. And we're now driving our institution forward in the same founding spirit of challenge, of opportunity, and trying to make it wholly relevant for the 21st century. I mentioned our founder, John Anderson. Uh, in his will, he left a bequest to have established a, a place of useful learning. He was a physicist or natural philosopher, as they would have been referred to back then, and a friend of Benjamin Franklin, a famous American inventor and academic. And Franklin had established the University of Pennsylvania in 1751 under the banner of useful knowledge. And Anderson was inspired by this, engaged with other European Enlightenment figures, and established through his will Anderson's Institution, now Strathclyde University, as a place of useful learning. And for all of you, remember that motto. It's about the application of what you know, how you do your work, and try to make sure others benefit from your knowledge. Across the campus, things are happening here which is all about useful knowledge. And as you've come to the Barony today, you'll have passed buildings, laboratories, and classrooms where our students and staff are developing drugs, to diagnose and fight disease. For example, we have several drugs on clinical trials at the moment in the areas of cancer treatment, degenerative kidney disease, infection management, inflammatory disease. Strathclyders are also producing new uh, energy technologies and policy solutions to tackle climate change, global warming, and to establish a low carbon economy. We're revolutionizing manufacturing and helping to create and stimulate the fourth industrial revolution or Industry 4.0, as it's called, through artificial intelligence, data analytics, robotics, automation. Our students continue their work in Africa to establish water, power, and communications infrastructure, and also to deploy health systems in remote communities. They're bringing prosthetic limb technologies to those in need in India. And we're working, of course, not least through our business school, to inform public policy and our national economic strategy as well as producing a generation of high caliber, ambitious entrepreneurs and business graduates. Our staff in the Technology and Innovation Center, which is down in George Street, a hundred million pounds investment, a uh, building that was opened by Her Majesty the Queen only three years ago, is revolutionizing the way business and industry work together with academics in areas from low carbon technology, photonics, bio nano systems, pharmaceuticals. And I mentioned Thomas Edison, Edison talk, called his team in his laboratories his inventions factory. Well, TIC is fast becoming Scotland's innovations factory. And over the next three months, subject to the support and challenge of our court, and I have the best governing court in Scotland, some of whom are on the stage with us today, we're making a case for another £150 million investment on that site for the new uh, focus to create Scotland's innovation district, working in medtech, fintech, quantum technology, industrial informatics, 5G comms as it happens in partnership with our good friends from the University of Surrey and in space technology. Uh, not too many people know that Glasgow is a major hub for space and satellite know-how. But uh, very importantly and ultimately we are providing people with the opportunity to transform their lives, the lives of their families and the impact on their communities. And as I mentioned, we proudly still attract many first-generation university students here to Strathclyde. And through useful learning, we give business and industry the tools and methods to be more innovative, more productive, and to drive economic growth. These are some of the reasons why Strathclyde in over the five, past five or six years had had, a, has had a string of independent acknowledgement through various awards. So in recent times, the annual Glitzy 
academic Oscars or the Times Higher Education Awards. We've had a string of these, starting with the UK Research Project of the Year, which was an amalgam of electrical engineers working with bioscientists and pulsed electric fields and UV light to kill pathogens like E. coli, Campylobacter, Salmonella. We won the UK University of the Year, just coming out of our major change program and getting on our new mission as a new international technological university. Through this great business school of ours, the year after, we recognized, or were recognized as becoming the UK Entrepreneurial University of the Year. Uh, and 18 months ago, we were the UK Business School of the Year. And of course, this talks about what we do and why we do it, but how we do it, that's very important. And last year, we won the UK Workplace of the Year based around our values, and it's values that keep people together and working in a cohesive way. So Strathclyde continues to demonstrate disproportionate impact, principally through all of you. You are our proudest and most effective product, our graduates, whether you've been through an undergraduate program, postgraduate program, or PhD. You are the women and men that are going to make a difference, whether it's in corporate life, social life, or in education. We create value and impact by translating our knowledge, working with society, industry, and our public sector partners. Universities must be seen as an investment, not a cost. Here in Scotland, we have the Scottish Government investing around £1.2 billion per annum into higher education, through which we deliver back £7 billion worth of impact into the Scottish economy every year. And certainly, the achievements of the business school and its departments give me absolute certainty that you are making a big impact. And I've tried hard to truncate some of the enormous contributions that all of you have made this year. Let me mention just a few of them. Uh, let's start with the leader of the business school. Recently, Professor David Hillier, immediately to my right, was recognized as through the, uh, being a recipient of the outstanding contribution by a business leader in the Inspiring City Awards. This is what a business school leads, uh, a business school with a business leader. David, many congratulations. <laughs> Just yesterday, uh, primarily down to the fact that this business school is positioning itself inside a leading international technologi technological university that is socially progressive, we graduated the first group of young people uh, called Breaking Barriers Program, a uh, relationship we have with Enable Scotland and the Scottish Power. Uh, these are 18 to 24 year old uh, people with some challenges that they've had an eight week program at the business school with an eight week placement in Scottish Power now getting out there into the world of work. The Fraser Valander Institute, uh, and not a day goes past without the Fraser's data, challenge, and views being quoted in the media at some point or other, now have a new partnership with Deloitte's, who sponsored their respected commentary reports. Fraser Valander, uh, we must always remember, is part of our economics department, uh, and uh, that's a fantastic way for us to show impact. In fintech, uh, the Researchers from the Business School, the UK National Physical Laboratory, the Toronto Stock Exchange and consultancy firm at ZEN have time-stamped financial stock trades using atomic clocks. David, we're turning you into physicists as well as business experts. And using quantum technology, they've recorded trades directly on a distributed ledger. These atomic ledger activities have recorded over 20 million transactions, time-stamping each over three hours of trading. And for an engineer like me, I quite like the accuracy. It's accuracy to one second in 10 to the 19, which is one second in the duration of the life of the universe. That's pretty accurate. And the business school is putting that to good use and making sure that trades are managed, monitored, and challenged. And there are many other things, and I'm delighted to say, because of the dynamics in this business school, only last night, I believe, David, there were some other awards at the HR Network Awards Gala Dinner. The Strathclyde Business School Department of Work, Employment and Organisation were awarded, and I quote, the outstanding contribution to Scottish HR in recognition of the school's long-standing excellence in supporting the Scottish HR community. And Veronica Gruber, graduating from the MSc in International Human Resource Management, won HR Graduate of the Year. To all of you, many congratulations. <laughs> And I could go on, but mustn't. So this is the exciting context within which you are graduating today. You're graduates of Strathclyde that puts our students at the heart of everything that we do. 
We value excellence in both education and research and the connection between research and education. And we create strong connections with society at large as well as with the business world. Uh, we invest a lot. We are in the process of appointing 75 new academics. My HR director, who's on the stage, who was giving out all the parchments, um, which is not doing that. She's uh, full-time occupied in bringing talent in here from around the world. And we're investing in infrastructure. At the end of uh, academic year 21-22, we'll have invested just over £950 million on this campus, renewing it, making it fit for purpose. Uh, from the students' perspective, we opened a new sports and health facility in September, £30 million plus project. Business School received a £25 million investment a couple of years ago. Our new learning and teaching building at the heart of the campus, a £60 million investment. And as an engineer, I quite like that we're opening a new district heating and combined heat and power uh, plant at the end of the month, producing our own electricity and heat and a £20 million investment. And we've talked about internationalisation a few times. The best universities contribute, collaborate and indeed compete on the international stage. We're no different. Our core university partners in the United States are Stanford, MIT and New York University with growing partnerships with Caltech, just won the Nobel Prize for the measurement of gravitational waves with Strathclyde physicists as part of the team and the University of Southern California. In China, we work with many institutions. In particular, we have strong links with Tsinghua University in Beijing and the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. In Singapore, Nanyang Technological University and the National University of Singapore. And across Europe, we have a raft of partners as well as deep partnerships here in the UK. I have the privilege of being the president of CESAR, which is the community of European technological universities. And in spite, colleagues, of what may happen in March, although we still face the uncertainty and flux around that, we will remain a European country. And collaboration, uh, enlightened thinking, the exchange of people and ideas and co-investment will still be the name of the game. Uh, and let us see if our colleagues in the political world can get themselves to a settled, sensible position in the coming months. But places like this and people like you can continue to make sure that the European collaboration and shared values still continues beyond the politics of what we face at the moment. But all of you, our students, benefit from being part of an international university. You've emerged with skills that help yourselves, Scotland, and indeed your own international communities to play a full part in the world. But very importantly, you leave today understanding that you're global citizens. Uh, and as well as being international, we look after our own city. We have the privilege of being the leaders in the Glasgow Economic Leadership Board, uh, working with the city and a whole raft of uh, business people. We're now trying to emulate the ambition and the successes of the traders and the merchants of Glasgow at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. And we're now building value and have supported the city in bringing 1.2 billion uh, pounds into the city through the uh, Scotland's first city deal, working in manufacturing, life sciences, low carbon technology, finance and business services, collaboration, ambition, and being bold enough to make that step forward to achieve something together. And uh, getting people into Strathclyde is our mission. Uh, amongst the Scottish research intensive universities, we take the highest number of young people from the most challenged communities of Glasgow. Communities that I belong to, through which I came to Strathclyde. This year, we've attracted 1,154 numbers I keep an eye on. That's still well ahead of our 2020 target. And uh, 500 of them came from the lowest, most challenged quintile. And uh, we will keep our doors wide open. And on that front, every year, uh, every calendar year, our first graduation ceremony happens in May, where we bring youngsters from the Children's University. I'm the Chancellor of the Children's University. And we had 220 youngsters aged seven to 12 march across the stage in May with their gowns, with their mortar boards and with big smiles. As my colleagues know, I love those ceremonies because I unusually get to look tall in those ceremonies. It's fantastic. Although I have to say, some of the 12-year-olds make me stretch as well. But they come here with their mums and dads, with their teachers, and the mums and dads, most of whom have never been across the threshold of a university. And our message is, higher education is for you. Learning is a pathway to achievement and not to separate them from their communities, but to have them embedded in their communities. And the youngsters have learning passports. So if they go to Kelvin Hall, they get a stamp their passport. They go to the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery, they get a stamp. Glasgow Science Centre, they get a stamp. 
night class stamp. And when they get it full, they come here and get a bachelor's degree from the children's university. And then if they stick with it, another 18 months worth of effort, they come here and I give them a master's degree from the children's university. And my academic colleagues, you know what's coming next. This year I graduated my first PhD student from the children's university. A 12-year-old girl, let me tell you, is going to put you all to challenge when she gets here, hopefully, in four or five years' time. And that's what it's about, widening access, research excellence, and connected to our local community, as well as, as making an impact in the world. So, let me conclude. If I characterise your university, Strathclyde, in 2018, I would describe us as having ambition, focus, and momentum. We remain agile and committed to delivering our strategy through the what should we say, the uncertainties and the continuing challenges in the sector. It's a great privilege for me to lead this institution with the wonderful academic talent and the professional services talent I have around me. And I'm pretty sure that our founder, John Anderson, if he were here today, would recognize the principles of what he sought to establish, i.e. a place of useful learning. So, to all of you in the Barony Hall, I'm certain that today's graduates will have enormous impacts on society and that 2018 can truly become a vintage year. So with that in mind, and recognizing that as you leave the hall, you're joining a community of over 170,000 alumni around the world, whatever you do with your degree, and whenever you choose to pursue your careers, remember that useful learning means that you apply your knowledge for the benefit of others, make a positive impact for yourselves, but also for the communities that you belong to. Please respect diversity value freedom of expression and thought, and reach conclusions and resolve disputes through reason and tolerance. These characterize the core values of your university. So, on behalf of the University of Strathclyde, I would like to extend my sincere congratulations to every one of you. Wish you every success in your future careers. Please stay in touch with us. Let us know about your progress. So well done again, and please enjoy the rest of this very special day. Thank you. Um, oh yes, I'm looking for my digital signal at the back of the hall. It was a thumbs up, which tells me it's not raining. Uh, so what we will do, colleagues, when I close the ceremony, the stage party will process down the aisle. We will make our way over to the Lord Todd Hall, where you're all cordially invited to join us, where there'll be some refreshments, an opportunity to mingle, have a chat, meet some of the graduates. Uh, and we shall do that immediately. The graduates, please come and join us too with your families. So, ladies and gentlemen, I trust you have enjoyed this ceremony as much as we always do. Many congratulations to all of our graduates. Let me now declare this congregation closed and ask you to be upstanding. Thank you very much. Thank you.